Hello! This week we are doing a classic thrift flip, but of course with a slight fantasy twist because I like that. Yesterday I perused some of the op shops of Melbourne and came back with these. My plan is to do a few thrift flips and create basically a costume over time. Today our goal is to create one of these. Your classic like renaissance festival bodice thing. I really wanted this to be something that you could make out of something you could find at any op shop. And so I picked up two men's shirts. We're going to use this one today, which is sort of a dobby thing. The spots are made up of like gray and either light gray or white threads. And then it's got red threads in the warp and blue in the weft. So it kind of gives it like a purpley maroony red feel. But yeah, it's a little bit thicker, so you want to look for a slightly thicker men's shirting. I mean, you could double layer fabric or just build up layers enough so that it has enough structure, but you want a heavier weight fabric. Let's jump into it. Okay, so I've pulled apart the shirt and I've ironed it, but I want to talk about my plan. So I've already mentioned we're going to make something like this. I don't actually have this pattern. It's a McCall's pattern that I've now repurchased, but it obviously won't get here in time. And I want to try something different. So what we're using is this pattern from Butterick. Yes, little schnoot. You can hop in the winter. So I can keep filming. Do you accept my bargain? Little pitcher patter. This pattern from Butterick, and I'm gonna do C, but without this weird little tail. This pattern is a little small on the bust and doesn't quite fit on the shirt pieces. So what I did last night, I went through and traced it and I changed this to be in two pieces instead of the one piece. So. Now it all fits on the shirt, which I just checked before because I was worried when I <laughs> ripped below the yoke like a dummy, but it doesn't actually matter. Would have been better if I hadn't, but it doesn't actually matter. Um, from my stash, I also have just some red, which I'm going to line it with, which I think will be fine, I think. And interfacing, which I just buy the pre-cut stuff so that I have it on hand. I'm also going to need eyelets, but I actually still have eyelets from this project, which I would have made more than a decade ago. Wow. This would have been like 13, 14 year old lit, maybe 16 year old. No, not 16 because that was right before I moved. Somewhere between 13 and 15. Whew. More than a decade ago. And here I was laughing at Jenny Dave and she was like, I hang on to scraps for way too long. And it's like, <laughs> I'm sure I have something in my stash like that. These. I'm also going to need cord, which I don't have yet. So what we're going to do first is actually just sketch this up to make sure I like what I'm sort of designing on the fly. And then we'll be good to go. Yes. Yes, schnoodle. Yes, little fudgy pudding. Sweetie fudge. There you go. Okay, so I had cut out all of my pieces in the main fabric and the lining, which was this color. I just need to cut it out in the interfacing, but then I decided that I didn't like how the red looked with the main fabric, so I decided to dye it this roughly this color using purple. <laughs> 
and didn't wear gloves. <laughs> Using some dyes that I had picked up from the up shop ages ago. I actually used this one, which is ultraviolet. I just used salt to set it. I don't know how well it will actually set, but I figure since it's not a daily use item, it should be fine. So those are now drying in front of the heater with the rest of my laundry. Let's just cut the interfacing out, which I don't think I'm going to film because it's the same thing as the others, and start to get the main piece ready to go. Nice. I've done the bodice up to where I feel comfortable. I just added in the boning to the side seam that I added in and the front seam. I will probably add something to the center front as well to help with the lacing closure, but I haven't decided exactly what that is yet and I don't have to decide yet. We'll see. So I've done a fitting test and I ended up having to add in two chunks there because I did not calculate for the turning of all the seams and everything and so I lost a bit of length in the body, width in the body, whatever. So I added in these two panels which I'm happy with and I'll stitch those down. I've just currently pinned them and I've basted them because what I've got to do next is take this bias trim and I'll trim all around the two front pieces and then all around the back piece separately. I think I'll do the bottom all together but I'll stitch them together and then do the bottom so that that will be over the top and then the bottom casing will encase everything. And then it will just be eyelets boning at the front and eyelets and then lacing. Yay!
Well, that took forever, but it is completely bound. The corners are definitely a little messy. The curves are definitely the hardest part. I haven't pressed this yet either. Um, so those are looking a little bit interesting, but it's ready. But it's like, and that looks brighter than it is, but it's like almost nighttime now. And so, and by that, I mean, it's just past five because winter. So I'm going to leave that here for tonight. And then hopefully we'll just do the eyelets in the morning. And then I can do like a big reveal with it on my person. I kind of can't believe that this was a men's shirt. <laughs> That's really exciting. This just arrived this morning. Um, which is the pattern that I used for my other bodice. I think I did E way back when. So I rebought it off of eBay. But I do love that these always only ever take like less than a yard of fabric. So less than a meter, <laughs> which is why I love these French English conversions because it gives me the meters over here. Like the ones with the peplums take more, those two. But these are super easy to do with like a tiny amount of fabric. So they're great for these secondhand projects as long as you have panels that are big enough to fit these. And if you're not, you freaking cheat and you put little extra panels in and you do piecing because, yeah. But yeah, I'm happy with how this is turning out. Got my little bunny slippies. Part one is done. I am actually thrilled with how this turned out. I think it looks great, especially in comparison to how it started as a freaking shirt. I think these little corset tops are great for thrift ship. Thrift flips because they don't take as much fabric as like a full dress or anything like that. I mean, I guess most short shirt things, but because you can kind of piece this further and further to smaller and smaller sections, it makes it great, um, especially if you're not doing it crazy structurally. Like this one's not intense. It's just kind of your overpiece. It's also the first time I've ever done this lacing. Um, it would have been nice to have actual ribbon or cord, but again, lockdown means I don't have access to that kind of stuff. So it was whatever I had. And in that case, this was the only thing that I had that really matched. I had like some blue ribbon, I had a little bit of gray, but I needed two tiny pieces and then I needed a long piece for the front. Also, this lacing is really fun. I think it's really cute. And I think it's an easy way to kind of like mix up the classic Ren Faire look when you're like, oh, I want to look a little bit more interesting. Change up the lacing on your little bodice thing. I also love this over a turtleneck. I might just keep wearing this for the rest of the day. That is it so far. I think I'll do the rest of the costume in the next video, fingers crossed. Um, depending on how lockdown goes, I might do another video in between just to give myself a little bit more time to be able to get all the materials because I'd like to get actual ribbon for this before I do the full costume altogether. If you liked this video, feel free to check out my other videos. And if you really liked it, you can subscribe. 
as you do on YouTube. And hit the notification bell if you want to know when I post. Because it's looking like fortnightly is way more achievable than any kind of weekly thing. Because then it gives me like a week to film and then a week to edit. And spill over time. Which this one needed spill over time. It's currently Tuesday of the editing week. Um, and hopefully you enjoyed it. That's it for this week. I hope you have a lovely week. Bye. I almost forgot. If you make one of these, please tag me on Instagram. I would freaking love to see because I had fun making this and I hope you do if you decide to. And I think it's definitely something that almost anyone can tackle. Like if you want a little bit of a challenge, uh, it's at iCastMending. Oh my God.